Hello and welcome to another video and we're going to try something completely different today. As you can see, this is not my typical content, but hey, it is a new game and I like trying some new stuff out and might as well give it a go. And if you don't like it, let me know. And if you do, I may continue playing it. We have Scrap Mechanic. Now, this is a game that has been in early access for a while. But just recently, as in like the past week or so, they've introduced the ability to play in a survival game mode rather than just creative. So we're going to give that a try and we'll make a new game and of course name it Kanajashi because that is who I am. The idea being is it's a sort of, you know, it's a standard survival uh, creation sandbox type game. You're dropped into this world where you have a crashed ship and you have to go about gathering resources from the terrain and fighting back PVE monsters that try to attack you whenever you grow food. That's the big thing. These monsters aren't like something evil. They're just these robots that their entire job is to harvest plants and harvest crops so if you you know have a bunch of crops yourself they'll want to harvest them and they'll see unauthorized farming detected and they'll come and get you but here we are in our crash ship we uh first things we got to put out this fire uh, there's a couple things that i grabbed there just to get them out of the fire and so let's Take a quick jog on over here as there is a convenient water source. I've played a little bit of this just to get the feeling of it. What we can take is a bucket, fill it up with water, and then dash on back to the fire and give the fire a nice big sploosh in order to put it out and have access to crafting. Ah, wonderful. So, we require some power. What else we got here? Seven of whatever this is. Oh, potatoes. Interesting to note, you can't actually eat the potatoes. Potatoes are only ammo. <laughs> we also have a, what is this thing here? A headlight. Oh, that'll come in useful when we're building a rover. And just pipes. I believe these are just decoration. So I'm going to put that back because it's not necessary for me now. Ooh, that's a switch. That is a useful component. But we can see here, all of the game's tutorials are on these sort of infographics in the game world. So number one is we need to find a battery and number two is we need to put the battery in the slot. So requires master battery. Now, I have played this a little bit already, so I do know that the master battery is in that building that we'll have to go and investigate. But, we can run on over here back to the little water pond. Of course, what else would be a pond except if it was water? Oh god. And we can see the other mechanics of the game in another infographic. We have the farming cycle. So you need to place soil, Put in a crop, grab water, water the crop, add fertilizer, optional step, and then wait, and then you get food. And let's see here, we currently have, I believe is a tomato growing, although it is not watered. You can see how that is a sort of a pale brown there. If we splash it with the water, it gets a nice dark brown, and now this thing will grow which is good for us. We also have a bunch of gardening supplies here, so let's just pick up all of this stuff. And also, all of this stuff we can just take and they become blocks that we can then place. So then I could go in here and just place that shelf back if I wanted to. Nice. So, let's 
clean this all up. This wheelbarrow, I'll take its wheel. The rest of it, it doesn't really need these pipes. These are just for aesthetics. But we'll clean up this entire area, gather all of this wonderful farming stuff, and we can relay out a nice and neat farm. I need to get some more soil out of my bags here. Uh, certain things have certain uh, stack sizes, like uh, tomato, like the different seeds are 20 stack. These are five stacks. So you can see there, I can only get that up to five. Uh, particular items like wheels can only go to one. So you have to manage your inventory here. Now, the problem is the AI doesn't like it when you farm too much. So if you farm more than eight of these spots, the AI will go illegal farming detected and will come and attack you at night, which I believe we still have a bunch of time. You can see in the top left there, it is 11 a.m. and essentially it is uh, one hour in game for every minute of actual game time. So I'm going to get a few of these all watered up. And if I aim correctly, oh, I thought I was able to water two of them at once. But we will farm a few of these and enough to cause the AI to attack so I can show that off. So I don't want to go too many. So we'll go nine here. And we'll open up our inventory. We'll put out a smattering of carrots and tomatoes. Let's say five tomatoes. Oh, I only got three carrots. So we'll put the carrots down, put the tomato down, and then they're all watered. So now we'll fertilize them all so they grow a little bit faster. And very shortly, I should get a warning that there is like illegal farming and the bots will come and attack this place at midnight. While that's going, these are growing, the bots won't just randomly attack you during the day, they only attack at midnight. So we can go and we can head off to that structure, which should be through the forest here. We can see the, the crash of like our ship's crash landing path. Oop. Loot chests. Yes. Give me that loot chests here. And we can go and scavenge that structure for goodies. Soil bags, chemicals. We'll make a quick lap around our ship here to get some extra stuff. And from my understanding is that if you're taking part, if you're playing this game as well, this initial area has one defined sort of terrain but loot spawns enemy spawns all that kind of stuff will be random depending on procedural generation so it is all different every time you play which is kind of nice so if you play You'll get the crash ship, you'll get that pond, you'll get this tower, and that's sort of like the tutorial area. And then after this area, it all is random, which is cool, which I will confirm because I uh, played this for a few hours yesterday and got a good duration into it. And we'll see if the next zone is the same as I remember it. But, this tower, time to investigate. Oh, another bucket, yay! Okay, that's good. I always like having a fair amount of buckets on me because it means then I can not do one trip at a time to the water. I can grab multiple buckets of water and uh, only take one or two trips instead. But we have to watch out for the harvesting bots. 
So they're trying to harvest all the crops, but however, they like to also harvest your face if uh, you get too close to them. Because, yep, there's one right there. That's one of the basic ones. It's got a little whip on its head. Here we go. And it tries to whip you up. It does some damage, but you can just smack it and it drops some circuit boards. Oh, these are the arms of slightly stronger bots, but you can refine them down and you'll actually get some resources out of them. And that gave us scrap metal that we can use to build or we can refine later into uh, higher level metals or use in crafting various components and such. So now, just need to keep searching around. Chest with a tomato in it. As we are finding our battery. Excellent. We got our master battery. Want to make sure that's separated out in my inventory so I can find it quickly. And we'll just continue clearing out the rest of this place. Ow! He smacked me. Now, your health regenerates very slowly. Uh, you can also <laughs> gather up their heads, which is kind of fun. Probably make like a trophy wall for all the enemies I've killed. But as you regenerate your health and as time goes by, you will use up your food and water. Now, you can't just directly drink water, which is kind of silly. However, what you can do is eat water-filled um, food. Like tomatoes that I have currently are really good for replenishing water compared to your food bar. Like uh, Carrots are good for replenishing food compared to your water. Uh, there's also some cows that you can find and give them food and then they will create milk which is really good for getting your water back. Oh, more gas. That's excellent. We'll need that. As we're gonna build a basic ro rover and also aha, we found a sun shake. Super good at getting back to the water. So yeah, typical strategy type game. Where you've got your not strategy game, the survival crafting mechanic type thing, like Minecraft or whatever. You gather your resources, you search out your stuff, you uh, build up a better base, you improve your ability to gather resources with better equipment. But why am I showcasing this? Like my channel's for space engineers. It's more of like a technical side of stuff. Well. There's an entire mechanic in here about connecting things and making contraptions as well, which we'll get to in a moment. In Space Engineers, if you want to build a rover, all you have to do is just slap some wheels and a battery on a cockpit and the rover functions. You don't have to worry about wiring anything up. It just runs. However, here, we have to worry about the wiring and worry about how everything functions together. So we'll get to that as we're building a basic rover. So it requires a master battery. Let's grab that into our bar and place it in. And that gives us access to our little craft bot here, which will allow us to make different little components. So we're going to have to farm some more of those bad guy's arms as we need some more scrap metal we also have to go and chop down some trees to get some wood but the idea being is that we can create a basic rover out of this stuff first thing we'll do though is create a connect tool we need a seat an engine we'll need a two more wheels as we already have found two We'll need three more bearings. Uh, actually, no, we'll need six bearings in total. Not only do I have to think about the wheels being on a bearing so they can spin, I actually have to have the bearings so the wheels can turn left and right 
so I can actually steer. So I need six bearings, so I can only do um, front wheel steering with rear wheel drive. And collect that up. Excellent. Oh, we'll just let that build. And in the meantime, we just need to go and collect more resources. Ooh, but it's getting dark. Excellent. It means, maybe, the enemy will come for my plants tonight. If not, I'll just have to uh, plant a few more things to piss them off some more. But, in my absence, they have grown up a little bit as well. And we can grab another bucket. Yes, expand my collection of buckets. <laughs> as, what did I like? I liked that, that, there, and then buckets on the last few parts, with food being on zero. Excellent. Jump in the water and fill all your buckets. Ah, yes. So now, waiting by, hopefully not getting attacked, we can just probably just work through the night here. We can knock down a tree. For some reason, the sledgehammer is your end-all be-all for every single activity you need to do. It is sledgehammering it, which is cool. And make sure I don't knock these things away too much. It is quite nice that they have this shimmer right there for you not lose stuff in the grass, especially at night. But I can just get to harvesting some trees here. So you sledgehammer them all down, grab all their pieces, and I'm just stacking them up immediately, getting them in the light so I'll be able to place them. And you can place them at a pretty insane distance like that. So it makes it easy to get them over to your refining area that you've established. Get over there. And then, after we get all this stuff over there, we can just refine them all and get a few more plants planted to hopefully trigger an attack for tomorrow night. Okay, and that's the last log here in this pile that I've made. And now all I have to do is the boring part, holding E as I scratch away at each of the logs. But as I do that, everyone will give me 10 of the wooden blocks that I can then use. But also, while gathering resources like this is going to be very important, we can also come over here and just suck away these resources, and boom, I have six more. So there's all sorts of stuff, like this entire wall here is mine. These are... what are these things here? They are net blocks. So you'll be able to uh, see through them and set up some nets, which would be useful. And as you take away from all of this, eventually gravity will take over and things will fall apart as... Oh, you can also increase the light. Hey! More light. And midnight has passed, so they didn't attack my farming today. But let's go and farm even more to see if they will get pissed off for next night. So every time you harvest, you get more of the seed back. So you'll always be able to plant some more. And we got three different foods this time. So we'll plant our beets there. We'll go two rows of carrots and two rows of tomatoes. And hopefully... Ah, I was able to get two at one. Excellent. And then with three buckets, I can get them watered up efficiently. Aiming at the corners between them. Ah, damn. Didn't get the double on that one. 
Hey, unauthorized farming detected. And they always attack at midnight. So we have 21 minutes and 57 seconds until they are going to attack. So if you don't want the monsters to attack, uh, you only farm, I believe it is, eight. And that's the number you need to stay under in order to keep them from attacking. But otherwise, you know, just farm away, make a big farm, but prepare and defend the farm so you don't have to worry. I don't know, it's all the fertilizer I have, so some of these will just grow normally. You make a big farm, you prep for it, you build defenses with all sorts of like saws and crushers and stuff like that, and then you have the huge wave to attack. You get a big harvest, and you don't have to do it again for a week or so in-game, as you'll have a bunch of food, which I'll get to eventually in this. But now, just got to refine some resources, and we'll wait for it to become morning. Oh, there we go. Holding E on various trees all night. We've processed them all. We've got a bunch of blocks here, and we should have plenty of crafting materials to start a rover of some kind. Now the only problem being is that we are low on, I'll collect that uh, the bearing, we're low on this scrap metal. So we have to go farming the enemies, specifically the slightly higher um, quality enemy, the slightly stronger ones, because they will drop those arms, which I can then uh, turn into my resources. Oh, wow, I have nine bearings. Ah, I guess I didn't need to make that. Ah, I, might have I must have collected some extra bearings from uh, my little excursion. Oh, well, we'll make another wheel then. We'll leave that crafting, and we are going to actually grab this locker here. I'm going to take this locker and slap it down right here so it's convenient. And I'm just going to turn it around so I can actually see the entrance of it so it looks fine. And I'll just slap in some of these wheels and such that I have. My car parts will be in there and I will be back shortly as I need I need metal so I have I need five more for a wheel so every arm I get ten I have my bearings so I need one four five arms I need to kill five guys before to get the parts to make my rover five more guys to kill and I got 17 minutes to be back for my farm now, when I was up there, I noticed that there was some extra buildings over here that we're going to go investigate, as there might be good loot inside, and as there's always the chance of an enemy being nearby when you're out and about. <laughs> ah, these rock formations? Too big for your sledgehammer? We have to make a drill and put that all actually on the front of our car in order to to drill those. And oop, loot boxes. Loot boxes. Yes! Give me loot. More sun shakes. Ah, there. Those are the guys I need to farm. Now these guys. They're a little bit more dangerous as they've got this pitchfork. So what you need to do is move up to them, then jump back and smack at them. Because, ow, 20 damage. That was painful. And you can get a fair amount of hits into them without taking much damage if you leap backwards as you do your swing. Because you'll get out of their uh, attack radius. So I need to kill four more of those as I continue to loot. Oh, two more coming in. Oop, got that one. And this guy should go down. Okay, there we go. Excellent. So now, 
I needed five. I only need two more. Eh? Ah, damn it. <laughs> I, move. I jiggled my mouse there while trying to refine. Thankfully, it's not super annoying. If I get three quarters done, and then I come back to it, it's still there. It just sort of slowly decreases. So I can get almost done, and then I'll just wait here for like a few seconds. You can see it's gone back a little bit in the, uh, the circle. So... If you move your cursor off for a moment, it's not like you lose all of your progression while you're refining something is nice. Uh, should be more, yep, more in here. And there's a couple arms just on the ground that we'll be able to get. So we'll kill this guy. Oh, he's, he's dangerous. Ah, baited him before. Excellent. Ow! Got him. We'll just get these ones on the ground, and then we'll have all of our resources that we need. We can head back, refine some of our stuff, get them into components, defend our farm tonight, and then tomorrow morning, we should be able to dig up the farm as we should be done in this area. We have enough to build our little first rover, and we can boogie on down the highway and get out of this zone and get to the next major place which is the mechanic shop. And I'm thinking I'll get to the mechanic shop in this episode, or at least I'll get this rover on the road, and that will be our uh, our episode of this. So there's probably more. Yeah, there's another thing up there I could get if I went and went up there and made a jump. But at the moment, I am going to leave it as I have all my resources, and we can just boogie on back to base. Okay, so... With all of our stuff here, we need to make a scrap gas engine, a scrap driver's seat, and one more scrap wheel. And then we'll have everything we need. We'll have a little bit of gas, but that should be enough for us to get to the next area without any issues. The other thing we might need is maybe some circuits. Yeah, we have six. We're already building the three from that, so we just we have six left over. Oh no, we're good on circuits too. Excellent. We already have a switch and a button from uh, what we picked off the shelf here. So and then a scrap driver's seat. And then I'll take 30 seconds to get going. So you build all of your rovers and such by placing down this lift. And then building it on top of said lift. So you can plop down the lift here. We can put all these seeds away into our inventory and get out our scrap wood blocks, which we'll use for our driver, our, our rover's base. And you can just drag out the size that you would like, which, ah, you know, decent size there. We'll expand it a little bit this way and add to the front of it a little bit. And then looking at this thing, all I have to do is press up or down on my keypad, and it raises it up or takes it down on the lift, allowing me to easily get access to the underneath. Now, we're going to make, like, this is going to be a simple rover. Like, ridiculously simple. And all we need now is one more wheel. Oh my god, I need 20 wood. No! Don't tell me. I have to go chop down another tree. That's okay. We got a tree here that we can take out. <laughs> As everything goes flying. Uh, refine. Okay, with this last block here, that should be enough for now. We've got seven and a half minutes until our farm is going to get attacked. So now I can build that last wheel is I have the materials. Excellent, 14 seconds. So we'll grab our wheels, grab our bearings. Ow, don't, do not stand in the fire. We'll pull this down. We'll put our cockpit, or our driver's seat, whatever this game calls it, right here. It is jank is shit, but that is because it is the first one you get. We'll put our scrap gas engine 
Well, I'll just slap it in behind here. And I think I might make this thing just a tiny bit wider, just for um, balance sake, so I don't flip this whole thing. Now to grab that last wheel. Excellent. So, for building your rover, you need to worry about every single rotation that your wheels need to do with your bearings. So not only do I need to add a bearing in the back here this way so that the wheel can rotate this way, in the front I also need to make sure that I add a bearing so that the wheel can rotate um, zoom back in here, rotate this way so that I can steer it. So what I need to do is, I I believe, make some little, uh, let's make some little wheel alcoves here so that the rover isn't uh, too far off the ground. So we'll go one block over, or, ah, uh, no, we'll go right up to it. Thankfully, there's no uh, problem with adding or removing blocks. You can just do it as you wish. Uh, don't do that yet. I'll just add in these little spots here. That way, my uh, rover isn't going to be too tall. So, first thing I need to do is add a bearing so that this whole thing can turn my front wheels. Then a block onto the bearing. And then off of that, I'll probably want to add another couple blocks down. And then add my wheel onto the outside of this. Now my wheel isn't that large. I want to get a little bit more uh, ground clearance here. So let's add three blocks down. Eventually, I'll be replacing these blocks with actual suspension that will uh, soften my ride. But for now, we'll put the wheels on like so. And then, you get out your connect tool, and you can see all of these different connections that are available. Uh, let me first, very quickly here, set up. Uh, we'll make the back a little bit wider. Take this one row off the back here. Like so. Set this bad boy up. And then, ooh, yeah, we need to go one more out. Get rid of that beam there. And uh, it's getting dark. Almost time to defend. We've got three more minutes here. Then all we need to do is go downwards to the same point here so that the rover is flat and add on some wheels in the back. And again, eventually these spots here will be replaced with uh, suspension in the future. Mm, wheel. Now, I have to wire the whole thing up. This engine here requires fuel. So I can drag it on and I can fuel it up if I need to. But that engine only has outputs for two max connections. So it's going to be a rear wheel drive with the these wheels just being bearings, so they're just going to spin, and the front is just going to con control these two. There's also, oh, don't want to do that. No, yeah, take that off. And now these ones doesn't matter which way they're rotating. We want to make sure that we change that to be rotating forward, rotating forward, and we can get in and we can. Mm, looks like. 
those should be good. And our rover is essentially complete. Now, I'm going to raise this up in the air. And hopefully the AI doesn't destroy it. Because I don't want them to. But as soon as the uh, we fight back the AI, which we might as well just go and collect all the stuff over here. And then we don't really have to defend it. We can just have the AI attack and we can defend the rover. Oh no, a few of the crops aren't done yet. But we'll take all of this stuff with us. Absolutely everything. So that we can go to the next place and set up a new farm there. Hey, done. Right as I planned. Right as I wanted it to be. Come on. We got another minute. <laughs> Stay alive, Rover. I'll have to, uh, if these plants get knocked out, that's okay. But, good, good, good. Grab them. Come on, plant. You're the last one. Good boy. Awesome. Okay. We can defend the rover instead and make sure the rover doesn't get attacked. It is up on its jack, so it should be okay. But I don't. I do not want it to get damaged. So we'll stand in here between as the AI will spawn in 20 seconds. So exciting. And, yeah, it looks good. We want to grab a few more ember before we leave this place, as those are useful later. But other than that, we're ready to go. So as this timer gets down to zero, AI will spawn. And here they are. And they'll attack your farm location. Although, thankfully... We have cleared the farm out, but they're going after the rover, it seems. Took him out. It should just be a couple. Oh, no, there's one over there at the farm hanging around. You can see it's a little light moving in the distance. Let's go take him out. As the rover seems safe for now. And get another circuit board. We'll take this light, because why not? It looks like it's useful. And there's a few more things we need to scavenge out of the damaged dropship here. And then we can just take off in our 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 car. Such as uh can't take that light. You can take these little lights. We can also make sure our respawn point is there, just in case we die. And we'll take this uh, locker, as it is a good storage compartment for the future. Unfortunately, we can't take the battery back, but that's okay. We'll find some new batteries in the future. Well, thank you, Mr. Craftbot. You worked well, and it is time for us to hit the road with our rover. So we can lower it down... We can, oh, also, one of the last things here, you need to connect this to there, so you're actually telling. <laughs> if I had just put this on and put it to max, <laughs> this thing would have just taken off without me. You need to make sure to connect those <laughs> so it doesn't. We'll take that away. If we get in here, the engine will turn on. Our steering is backwards, so we got to change that. And, ah, very good. Our steering is now good. I need to give a bit more fuel to the engine. And off we go with our first little rover. Our car. I guess I'm calling it rover just because of Space Engineers. It's bumpy as shit. It's horrible. But it's going to work to get me to the next spot here as I drive off into the night. Now, just be a few more hours here, well, minutes in game time, and the sun will come up. Until then, I'll just bump along here and try to keep myself safe. There we go. 
I haven't really gone far, actually. I just got to the place where we scavenged the... Or that's where we got the master battery up there. I also took that light that was near the farming and slapped it on the front of this. And it's making a decent little headlight. But here we are. We have found the road. Now. You just go along the road. From here, I believe this is all procedurally generated. Because I'm not sure if I ever remember this stuff from my other playthrough. Pull up engine power here so we can get going a little bit faster. But our little crappy little rover here is just going to putz putz his way. Our goal is to putt our way down this road until we run into the mechanics. And it is a building with a giant neon mechanic sign and I think I just saw it over there on the right so I think it'll be down this road and to the right excellent we can see some there was some corn over there as well there's a little shanty town and a cow yes that's where you can get some milk let's oh there's also a bot here we should take him out so he doesn't damage our vehicle here, bot. And uh, top ourselves up. And take a look here. Oh, there's some seeds. There's always some goodies. And you can see some fertilizer there. And what are you? More seeds. Tater seeds. Nice. The rest of the stuff is, well, I mean, the floor here is actually blocks, so we could actually just take this floor. Mine. Now I can use those for construction. <laughs> Deconstructing people's houses. Yeah, but everything you see, you can deconstruct. If all something like this, you can pry it up. And you could have put it in my inventory if it wasn't full. In the meantime, we can just gather up this guy's little bits of bobs here. Get some more wood for us. We can always come back here in the future if we need to gather some more stuff. As there are plenty of farming supplies around here. But for now, we'll just keep on going. Now, this game world, like, when I was playing with my friend, I got on, I made a basic vehicle, and I just drove and drove and drove for, like, an entire game day, and I never reached the end. From what I, re what I, what I understand is that the, the game world, you start in one of the far corners with the crash ship, and as you expand out, you just have a massive world to explore. It, yeah, this this is different compared to last time. Very different. So this is procedurally generated. Nice. As you can see, there's a another road down there, but there is the mechanic shop right there, as well as a lake, because the mechanic shop that I had in uh, my playthrough with my friend was in the middle of a forest. And this lake is good. That means that we can get some resources from under the water. And also, if there's any like little peninsulas and stuff, there's a easily defendable farms. And that will be excellent for us. There's also some rocks there in the forest, which we can gather for materials. And we can pull on up to the mechanic shop. Now, from here, we've got the ability to build anything. Although, unfortunately, requires power. Requires a master battery. I should drop off a uh, uh, couple things here, just to throw them on the floor. Uh, from what I understand, things don't just despawn. And there is a master battery over here in number two. Although, also, 
an enemy. So, just gotta take care of him. Come on. Ah! Oh, jeez. He, uh, ragdoll when he jumped down. <laughs> God damn. That was a little frightening. But. We got... We, we took care of him. And uh, in here, there's a master battery. And we can set our spawn point in there. And then, take the master battery, plug it in to the station here, and we can start building all sorts of stuff. Oh wait, the master battery plug-in is right here. Power has been restored. The station is fully operational. And we can make different bots. Craft bot, refinery bot, resource collectors. All sorts of wonderful things. But that, if you guys are interested, will be in the future. And let me know if you're interested in watching me craft my way through this game with the connection tool and a whole bunch of logic gates that they have. You can make rudimentary programming and automated structures like automated defenses, automated um, farming, which looks like we have a nice ocean here to work with and a fairly, I'm thinking that this might be a pretty easily defended peninsula. Either this or yeah, we can build some nice farming contraption on one of these little peninsulas here. And if we wall off that front and make some death traps, we could uh, kill the bots that come to raid it. But that is going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. And good luck out there, fellow scrap mechanics.